Want some custom firmware for your Anbernic 35XX Plus or 35XXH? Well, here you go. Hey everyone, thanks for stopping by. This is Retro Fun Tech. So I just got done with my first impressions video on this device here, the Anbernic RG35XXH and bam, some custom firmware has just dropped for it. Now to be clear, it's been out for a moment, but not for the H model. Also, it was mostly in beta until now. So the cool thing about this software is that if you have either of these devices from Anbernic, the 35XX Plus or the 35XXH, you can follow along and the software works for both devices. I will show that later in the video. Also, if you are crazy like me and happen to own both devices, you can swap the card back and forth and use it on both devices. So I will be using my PC to show you how to download, flash, and install this firmware on an SD card. All the links will be in the description below. So this software is called Kariki, or you can think of it as Bodicera Lite. Bodicera is not only some creepy prehistoric looking cousin to the cockroach, but it's the name of a software that is used a lot in the emulation world, typically on PCs or some standalone emulation consoles. It has a ton of potential because it can support a plethora of systems, depending on the device that you are using it on. Now that we have a little insight into what we are working with here, let's get to installing the software. So for the install, you will need a spare or new SD card that is 32 gigs or higher. Now since both devices take two different SD cards, you have the option for a separate games card. However, to keep things simple, I will be throwing the games files on the same SD card. All right, let's get to the fun part. After you have your SD card, you want to go to the GitHub page that is linked in the description below. Here you can read about the firmware, the installation, what emulators and cores it supports, and what isn't supported just yet on the software. Keep in mind that this is a custom firmware that developers in the community are actively working on. So from time to time, there might be updates that come out for it that will add new features or fix things. So let's scroll down to the bottom of the page and you will see the assets section. Here you will find the installation file that we need to download. It's the big long name right here that is the biggest size and it will end in GZ. Just to give you an idea, should you watch this in the future and the date changes. Click that file and it will start downloading. While you wait for that to download, maybe click the Kofi button above and buy the developers a coffee. Custom firmware developers don't make any money for doing this, but they're awesome anyways. And after that, before the file is downloaded, let's insert the SD card that you are going to use for the firmware into your computer. You will need to format it to XFAT, which I have already done, but it's it doesn't hurt to do it again for the sake of this video. The other thing that you will need to do is go to the website for Belena Etcher that is linked in the description below and download that program. Now, once your firmware file has downloaded, you need to unzip or extract it. Then let's open Belena Etcher so we can flash the file to the card. Make sure that the target is actually your SD card and it's the correct one. You don't want to accidentally flash this image onto a different hard drive or something. Now, once you have the correct destination that you were going to flash to, you just go back to the ma main menu and click on flash. This will take a while, so maybe go grab yourself a sandwich or some coffee. Once the firmware has been flashed to the SD card, Elena Etcher will say complete and you will likely be greeted with a slew of pop-up windows and might even be asked to format the card again. Don't do any of that. Simply close all the windows except the one that will read share and looks like this. Here is where if you decide to use the same card for the firmware and the game files that you will load your game files and BIOS files. Also disclaimer, I can't share where to get the game or ROM files or the BIOS files, but you already have access to them and you didn't even know it. You can copy them over from the original card that came with the device. If you want to pause and not put the BIOS and the game files on the card and you just want to double check your work, you can always eject the card and throw it into the device just to see if 
the firmware actually copied over correctly. I might suggest doing that in case this was your first time flashing firmware, but you should be fine if Belena Etcher says that it's completed. And then you will be likely greeted with this screen. This is from Botticera. And if you see this, you're probably good. Ta-da! I installed the firmware correctly. So if you see all this, you'll be fine. If you've loaded your game files, you'll see some other game files here. Now before you eject the SD card, you want to make sure that you hit the start button and actually shut down the system. And then you can eject the SD card and then throw your game files on there. But make sure you do that if you are going to turn off the system at all. Alright, so now that we've done all of the things, it's time to go have fun and test some games. Also, to get out of a game, you want to hit the function button at the top and the start button. If you're on the 35XX Plus, you want to hit the start button and the menu button in the middle. Just like with the previous stock firmware, both devices play 16 and 8-bit systems just fine. Now to access the menu for Botticera or Kariki, exit the game and hit start. There you will be able to change your settings for the game, emulators, turn on Wi-Fi, scrape box art, change your themes, or download new ones, and a slew of other settings. It actually looks pretty similar to Emulation Station, if you are familiar with that, or Amber Alec. Dreamcast is kind of hit or miss. It depends on what game you are playing, and it also depends on your personal preference of whether you think you can play it with a little bit of lag or not. For the most part, there is going to be a tiny bit of stuttering here and there. Unfortunately, with Sega Rally Championship, I didn't even end up playing the game. You can hear the terrible stuttering, and sometimes some of the games will just not play. So let's switch gears and test out the 35XX+. Plus. If you happen to have both of these devices, you can literally just take out the card and throw it into the other device, and it'll work just fine. Now, something I did want to show off here is not all N64 games are going to work on the 35XX Plus. It's simply because we don't have any thumbsticks and the N64 actually needs that. So here you can see that I can't play this game, but it actually works, and I'll show you that later in this video, it actually works on the other device on the H. But you know what does work is arcade games. And I want to point out the reason that I am showing off this specific custom firmware, Belena Etcher Kariki, is because Min UI is out for the 35XX Plus and I believe possibly the H, but it doesn't have arcade support and I can't deal with that in my life. I love arcade games. I absolutely love them. Alright, let's test out some PSP. Let's start out with some lightweight Gradius. And it looks like it's playing pretty good so far. Now as we go up to Tekken 6, you can definitely hear and see the stuttering. I think it's still probably playable, but that's up to you. And this is also at 1x resolution with auto frame skip on. So this is kind of what you get. Ridge Racer actually surprised me. Usually this game is pretty hard to run and it was running really smooth. So some games are gonna run great, some games are not gonna run great. These are just bonus games, in my opinion. The Dreamcast, N64, and PSP. So let's switch back to the 35XXH. F-Zero is actually running really well on the H. 
And just to show you, Diddy Kong Racing is working as well. Now let's go back to PSP and see how all these games run on the H. I always like to test out Ultimate Ghosts and Goblins because once I hit the flame burst, if it crackles or stutters, then I know there's something wrong. And it looks like it, the H is doing just fine. So that's it for my tutorial on Koreki or Bodicera Light for the 35XX Plus and the H. I definitely think anyone who has the H should consider this firmware. N64 and most games on the other systems work really well. If you have the plus, well, that's up to you. If you want something new, hate the stock firmware, maybe give this a try. If you don't care about no arcade games, maybe check out Min UI. Or just be patient, and I'm sure soon we will see Garlic OS drop for both of these devices. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. As always, be sure to like, subscribe, and even share this video with someone who needs some custom firmware fun for their Anbernic devices. Thanks for watching. Stay awesome, everyone, and go play some games.